You're listening to the Go Lightly Martial Hour on freedomtalkradio.net. seeing now is we're seeing Yah turn up and go, see, yours is man-made. Check out the pyramids. Everything's written in my name, and that's where we're seeing the convergence, the actual... That's where the well, battle is. The battle's in the numbers. Well, <clears throat> the point about Satan, or... or yeah. I'm way ahead of your game. Show, show number... Uh, oh, 33? No, is it 32? I got it wrong yesterday, but oh, I think okay. it's 32. Oh, I don't well, know. Whatever it is. Yes. But the, the people watching know. <laughs> well, or my, listening, they my know. My first show was 31. And that was oh, two days ago. Oh, so this ago. must be 33. This is 33. Perfect. Hello. 33. 33. Only the 33 degree Masons know exactly what Yaw's up to. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Yaw's the only one that knows what they're up to. So, <laughs> uh, so Adam is back by popular demand of one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and of. Okay, we can postpone the scan for now. And last night we were having a um, bit of a comedy hour over dinner as you were retelling some of your ad- adventures. Well, it wasn't really retelling, really but we were um, reflecting a little bit. And, well, that's yeah. what retelling is. Yeah, oh, the, we weren't going too far into it. We were just kind of beating around the bush. But um, yeah. yeah, well... Talking about the experience and not really what I experienced. <laughs> you know? well, 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 how far have you come in the six years? Because it is six years <sighs> since I found Yah. And you were with me when I did. And uh, I, I have to say, Adam, you, uh. you, you, you have been named after all mankind. And you have been uh, the longest battle, if you like, to get to this point now where you're... Uh, well, it's like, it's not... Like, yeah, where you're a treasure. <laughs> that, that's not the way I like to put it. I don't say that it's like the longest battle. I just find it mm-hmm. as my own refining, right? Like, um, yes. And I think, there's, I think there's people out there right now that are, believe in Brian 100% that um, still have a lot of refining to do. Mm. And they don't realize it. And they think they're in the safe niche. And they think they're all sweet. But um, no, there's still a lot of work to be done. And um, the way I look at it is, is that I've always been willing to do the refining. No matter where it's been, no matter what it's been doing. It, no matter how much I protest, I always knew that there was something to learn along the way. And so I tried to keep my eyes through, the, my eyes of the student. But... Um, but that's the thing. I just as thought, just as I thought, I had learned something in my life, and that was it. I've got it. Hell's no. I got thrown right back into the depths of um, hell, of, of hell, and my own BS, and just you know, um, yeah, just, just, just. Ugh. So hell yeah. really is a state of mind, isn't it? It it truly is. It's um, it's a state of mind. It's depression. It's anxiety it's 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 you know it's it's really hard to explain it honestly I, I find it in the mood of depression but the way it was hitting me it was almost in like hopelessness being apathetic um, having absolutely no faith even knowing your belief and like it's not even a belief it's a knowing but having absolutely no faith behind that that's it's really hard to comprehend and um and of course you know like the mental battle because you're always you're thinking things that you usually don't think like, and, and you're listening to other sides of the spectrum and considering everybody's option, even though you know what the truth is. And it really does your head in. And you're constantly contradicting yourself in everything that you do. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it's almost like a state of schizophrenia. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what hell is. And it's basically a never-ending panic attack. One long anxiety attack. Mm. Yeah. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, now, you said last night that for the first time you felt happy. Oh, yeah. What, this, yeah. Latest, this latest bout of hellish... Oh, it wasn't even like latest bout of hellish. It was... It was honestly my final shove off the precipice. Mm. It was like, get it right or just fall by the wayside. Mm. You know, and that's how I felt. And, um, yeah. Like, well, actually, Yah had said that. 
Well, that's... Yeah. yeah so that's you're picking cool. up because he said this is the last time. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. I, I got that. But um, uh, that's how I felt in my own soul, though. Mm, right? That's, yeah. that's, it didn't need to be said. It didn't need to be reiterated. I felt that, you know, before I was getting kicked out. Before mm. I got kicked out, I just knew there was something wrong. Um, something that needed definite changing. And, like, you know, with me, man, like, I was so... Um, so mentally addicted to cannabis, like if I didn't have it, I would go into a panic attack and I would think that it was because of my own natural state, my own natural being. Uh, and partly because it was because, you know, I don't address things when I was sober. Whenever I'd come into an emotional hiccup, I would always go towards cannabis and whatever I could to take myself away from it, thinking that's the best option instead of actually addressing it with a sober mind, feeling what I need to feel and then carrying along with that and learning from it, uh, which is what everybody should be doing. Pierre. <clears throat> um, so what we, what happened this time? Jeez. Um, I call it the final purge. Um, that's all I can really, really relate it to. Um, and there's a lot of us out there that need um, that final purge. I was so dependent on so many things. Um, cannabis, cigarettes, um, just, just crap. Just crap. And um, it really, in the long run, it does nothing for you physically, spiritually, or mentally. And um, also, do you think you're dependent upon Claudia? Emotionally? Was that another dependence? Yeah, uh, dependence in... Uh, yeah, dependence in more of like an obsession, I guess. Like I, I still love her with all my heart. Yes, right? of course you do, but, but um, it's one thing to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that. It was like a... Mate, that's just how you are when you're depressed. Like, mm. like I, honestly, that whole it looks it's just like a whole dark period of my life, like the past past twenty three years. <laughs> it's just and been you're, one you're big how dark old period. Now? I'm, I'm twenty three. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, seriously. Mm. Um, just to clarify, Adam was always uh, very different as a small as a child. He would ask some of the gnarliest in depth spiritual questions. And uh, I was, and I wanted like, answers. I wasn't taking no airy fairy BS. No, well, I didn't give it. I mean, hello, I got into trouble for uh, telling Ali and Aaron they were four and three. I got into trouble and was held over my head uh, for years. That when they came to me, they were three and four years old. Mum, please tell us the truth about Santa Claus, because <laughs> you know that 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 was my uh, holy rolling. Christian days in the Pentecostal church and all the rest of it, and it was all about the truth. So I told them the truth. Well, it didn't stop us celebrating, and they appreciated it. They understood the truth, and it was all good. Wow, did I get into trouble, though. Uh, and it was held over my head. How could you rob them of this, that, and the other? They weren't robbed of it. As a matter of fact, there was the one year in Canada there where there were no Christmas presents at all because we had no money to buy any. Yeah. And that... I think it was you that told me it was the best Christmas. Or, or, or the it was. Day. I remember that. I remember that vividly. Uh, no money for presents. The girls were the only ones that literally had income coming into the house, paying rent, buying our food, and also buying presents for the family. God bless them. Now I was shielded from this as a child. I never knew any of this, and I always said to my sisters, "That was the dumbest thing you could have done was shield me." I should have been. You should have been open with me as a kid. Let me know the real the reality of the situation. I would have grown up a lot faster. You know, but um, no, but that was the best Christmas. I got a t shirt and a little tech deck. I remember exactly what I got. Oh, the t shirt. <laughs> and the t shirt said, Just be happy I'm not your kid. <laughs> and um, and yeah, no, I remember that day vividly. Really, you know, it was the greatest Christmas. And, mm. um, yeah. Even yeah. though having, you know, at such a young age, having to deal with the sight of your, your dad, you know, stressing and being absolutely torn about not being able to put presents on the on the tree yeah but you know uh, think back to the previous christmas exactly the exactly top, you know, exactly uh, when we as didn't an australian they drove me nuts you know. anyway moving right along to 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 now and six years ago when uh, you knew we were looking for god on the earth body oh. and flesh oh, and oh then, that wasn't six years ago that was that was well i know it, it 10 was, years ago, it was 12, nine 12 years ago it was from 1999 on the earth Okay, so you're with me. Yeah. Well, you have to be with me because you're with Lazarus and I'm Martha, so that's what that was all about. Yeah. And then finally, the night of, you remember it was David Clues that sent the link, and you, it was your 17th birthday. It was my 17th were, birthday. And you fell asleep. I you, fell asleep at 8 o'clock because, you know what, I had a two and a half hour train ride. I was stoned. Yes. I got home, and it was a very awkward moment where I get to my nan's house, 
And there's mom, Allie, Paul, Nan, Cake. Yeah. I'm stoned. Yep. Yeah. Going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so he fell asleep at Nana's and I yep. went home to two tulip close. <laughs> and uh, so I was alone when I got the message from David Clues. Mm-hmm. There's a... There's a, there's a fellow in Melbourne saying he's God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I sent you the link. Go and have a look. So into my hotmail, click, and there it is. I found him. That's him. Hello, Nostradamus13. I'm the root of Jesse. The root of Jesse, the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. That's me, he says. So so that was um, joy and hallelujah for me. What was it for you? Um, It was another... At the time, for me, it was just like, oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> Another one. But, um, like, you know, I, I was open to it, right? Like, yeah. Because I always am. Because we went through that gnarly exactly, David Clues. Exactly. That was so gnarly. Like, oh, you got to understand. Those clues. Like, had the for, a kid, for a kid my age, I was worn so thin with this whole God on the earth thing. I was ready to give it up. So, but Brian, Brian, Brian was like, I remember seeing him. I was like, look. The only way I see this working out is God is going to be hilarious. He's going to have a very crude sense of humor. Um, and he's going to be a pot smoker. You know, he's going to... It's that simple. You know, that's the only way I see it coming through. <laughs> and uh, so she goes, you know, and, and she finds Brian. So I'm looking at this guy. Because David like, Clue sent me the link. <laughs> I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, oh, he's a bit serious. You know, I just rolled my eyes and I left mom to it. And she stayed on the computer, eyes glued to the screen. I just went on about my business. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think anything would come of it, right? I just thought, oh, she'll probably make contact. And then, you know, and you, one thing led to another. Do and... you remember, though, the night? Now, you may not remember because you were stoned, but do you remember the night? We stood in the courtyard. This is before I found him, not too long mm-hmm. before I found him. And we... And you said, you said, uh, you said something about Malachi. He's, you started to literally shake and say... He is going to be standing here in this courtyard. Do you remember that? Yeah, night? I remember that. We were night. literally the Aramaic yes. Martha and Lazarus once again was, out there looking at the stars, and you were seeing shooting stars. And well, we, well, yeah, uh, I was a stubborn son of a gun, <laughs> and because we hadn't found God and I hadn't had any of my own divine proof, right, through my own life experiences, uh, we were standing in the courtyard, and I was going, "Okay, if God's real, show us a shooting star." I'm like. Okay, that doesn't count, right? Because, like, <laughs> so basically, I'm such um, a thick-headed person. Uh, it took 19 shooting stars <laughs> repetitively, one after the other. Like, it wasn't like you know, within two minute gaps. It was like, and it was only after mentally me asking for it, right? And yet, I'm denying it every time I see it. Oh God, no. <laughs> and then after I'm saying, you know, I felt this weird feeling. The wind was swirling in the yes. courtyard, and yes. I just looked around and I was like, "Where the hell is Malachi?" Because I felt like I was being watched. Right? I honestly felt like I was being watched. I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if a dude rocked up right now. And because he didn't, I was like, "It's all bullshit." You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> the stars, nineteen shooting stars, Malachi. Ah. Yeah, so, you know. So all right, I, I, I find him, and, and now. The stars that night, because you stayed the whole night around at your grandmother's house, you'd fallen yeah. asleep, yeah. stone. So I'd already called Ryan the next morning. The first thing I did was pick up the phone. Hello! Like, you know, I've been looking for you for all this time. And it was like, he's got to be expecting me. He ha- so David Clues, who sent, by, by that time David's sharing the house, he's a, a renter. Yeah. And um, uh, I say to David, he's expecting us. And, and David starts to get all wonky like this. He was used amazingly, the angel in and out of him. Oh, that was so freaky. Holy shit. In smokes. and out, in and out. I um, think, and, yeah, weird. <laughs> totally weird. Yeah. He totally thought he was going, he, it, it messed his head up so much, he went on Seroquel. He was on 200 milligrams of Seroquel. That's an antipsychotic, psych, psychotropic drug or something yeah, like, yeah basically but he was already on stuff wasn't he no 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 no. the no. Seroquel he got thrown on <laughs> after, after the, meeting mom the JCDV part of the and after all this stuff starts happening he's just like oh god he's doing me head in and he started medicating himself out he gave me one of those pills and I melted in front of the computer well you, but you know you know what was happening because and you had the dream right before you met David or, or, or what remember the dream the great big warehouse 
the shoe yes. is your chip. No, yes, no, I'm chocolate. walking through the shoe. I'm walking through, um, it's called Ultimate Distribution. And I'm walking through the warehouse and um, I'm looking at all the shoes, right? And I'm like, oh. And then I go up to the, uh, the, it's a DC model and it's called the Avatar. And it's called the Avatar um, AV or something. It was called the Avatar AV or AE. But it was a DC shoe. It was a DC shoe, yeah. A DC shoe company and Avatar. Yes. And I remember, you know, I pulled them down out of this massive shelf full of all these boxes of shoes. Like, it was like, I, as I was walking through the warehouse, I wasn't even looking at, for a certain pair of shoes. I was just walking, stop, turn, grab, put the shoe on, and then looked at it in the mirror, and it was the, um, the Avatar shoe, right? right? One of my favorite shoes, right? Mm. And um, it had the clear sole, right? Clear sole on the bottom of the foot, which mm. is a cool thing, right? Mm. But, uh, yeah. And then when I told mom about that, she's like, an Avatar, DC, David Clues, Avatar. Yeah, well, what, what happened was, um, in the dream, you said you put the shoes on, you were standing in front of the mirror, but yep. the mirror was not reflecting the shoes. You would walk a few paces, take uh, the shoes off, you'd look in the mirror, and, and you would see the shoes on. So to me, I'm thinking on holy yeah, ground. Literally, that's Moses smart. in front of the burning bush, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. Yep. And the avatar, of course, is like God in man. Mm-hmm. So I'm going, oh my God, God in man. So it was in and out of. It was literally yep. in and out of. And that's what happened. No, because I, it was, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's what I remember. Yeah. Looking down, yeah. seeing the shoes, mirror, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, the way I, I still do everybody's head in when I talk about the JC, Jesus Christ, DC, which is... David Clues, J.C. D.C. part of the DVD uh, because that and David Clues his name Clues. Hello, the blue uh, Clues. Yard's <laughs> shaking his head behind camera. Right he now. still doesn't get up. But so much. Well, to a logical mind. I know. To a logical <laughs> mind. That's why I said logic did not find you, dear. <laughs> um, but that was a, a very intense. It was. Ended up being, I think, about three months total. Very intense time. And you remember how much weight I lost and because of the she information went, was pouring in. She says the information was pouring in. What happened was she developed a very unhealthy eating disorder where she literally was, like, fasting. Well, I couldn't. She, 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 but she, I couldn't eat. There was well, no, exactly. There, was, there is a point where you stop eating so much that the actual but, act of eating But hurts, that was because my mind was literally, seriously, I mean, David talks about his mind being done in. My whole mind and body. Do you know what happened? You remember the night that um, I went over to that Jewish doctor's house that you ended up... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Right. I was there one night, okay? At Rose Bay. Rose Bay. Yeah. The doctor. Yeah. That you found all that stuff. Well, I was there one night with Abby. I did not sleep any of that night because the scriptures were going through my head. Mm. Now, I'm in a Jewish doctor's house. I... I wake up and I walk out into his courtyard and I throw up. I physically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. throw up. And the revelation is going through my mind. I will spew thee out of my mouth. And then the Rose of Sharon, that's another name for Jesus, the Rose of Sharon. In the dream, now it was David Clue's face that comes to me in the dream because he was the dude being used, the angel in and out of David but was all about the Rose of Sharon and literally smelling in the dream, smelling the Rose of Sharon. So this was that one night in the doctor's house. You know, I go back to the apartment where, where da- da- David comes from. Yeah, yeah, later, yeah. Adam was there. And oh, he had, he had multiple passports. and uh, a they, Jew, Yeah, yeah a they, had his, they all had Israeli passports, right? And yeah, um, yeah it just... He was doing something. They were into something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but the next day, it was when I went back to the apartment and and you just looked at me and and David just looked at me and said, I'll I'll, I'll make you a cup of tea, go out onto the balcony. I I was sick. I was skinny. I looked like a skinny cow. It was disgusting. But, 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 listen, this is the amazing part. David walked into the apartment. He he got there a little bit after me. He walked into, walked straight into the kitchen and he, he said, I'm dust with rose oil. You know the essential oils yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. I'm dust with rose oil. That rose oil really is amazing. I had just drink, and I could smell the rose of Sharon. He walked straight into the kitchen because he'd gone to see Raywin and she was into the essential oils. Mm-hmm. And he'd been dust with the rose oil because it's the highest resonation of all the essential oils is the rose oil. 
Anyway, so this is what was going on. Literally, as the paintings, remember the paintings that I did? Mm -hmm. the, they were coming alive in the living room of Balmain then. So that was early 2007. And then we, we leave that apartment and I have to find a place to live. We end up uh, in two tulip close barrel, hello. And that's where you have the experience, the Malachi. <laughs> Pardon? What's that? So that's where the pussy came. Oh, yep. yeah, so, yeah, yes, tell... The main cune. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah comes our, our famous, uh, No, well, item. like, because I was such a little shit back then, and I'm like, look, I've been through this so many times, if this guy's going to run through my life, and, you know, I'm, I'm expecting him to run through me mother, right? You know, just come in and leave. And so I was like, all right, if he's going to do this, he's going to pay for it, right? And so that's what I said to mom, I was like, that's it, you know, he wants to buy it, he, he can buy my belief. That's, how, that's where I'm at with this. So, of course, Brian hands me the cash, and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? I got an idea. I ended up going up city and spending the cash on some of the best dope I could find, right? Really killer stuff. Amazing. And so we set up this whole idea that, you know, me and Brian are going to have a smoke out, and uh, yada, yada, yada. So, cool. Why not? I roll up a fat dube. Ryan rocks off. You know, how you going? Blah, blah, blah. Hi. Yeah, good night. Start smoking a joint with him. Now, Brian starts reflecting about the first time he smoked pot, was, with, was in a dugout with an Indian in Canada behind the local cop shop. I'm listening to him, I was on smoking, I'm like, hmm. thinking in my own mind, I was like, yeah. Now, a few years after the first time I was smoking, I was smoking in a dugout with an Indian and behind the local cop shop in Steveston. So I'm like, huh. <laughs> So, as you can see, in my own mind, I'm thinking God would smoke pot, right? And here he is telling about the first time, his first experiences with cannabis, and it's in a dugout with an Indian behind the local cop shop. I'm thinking about my first experiences with cannabis in the, in the dugout with an Indian oh, behind have, the local cop shop. How old were you? About 46, 46. <laughs> yeah. How old were you? I was about, you know, 13, 14, 15, <laughs> right? And, um, yeah, so, so hey, you know, we're, we're smoking back and forth. He's handling the joint very well. Like, this is this is a big two grand bomber, you know? <laughs> this is a huge thing. And um, we're smoking and just, you know, small small chat. And then, um, you know, the joint finishes. And I go, oh, you know, we're sitting in the back in the courtyard at this point. And I'm going, oh, would you like to come into the shed for a few bombs? And he was like, yeah, okay. And honestly, he was he, he was contempt. He was good. He was He looked fine. He, you know... Now, he had already warned me what happens to him. <laughs> yeah, but he seemed fine at that point. Now, we go into the garage, into the shed, and um, sit down. And I'm ready to pack up a bong. And Brian goes, oh, what water's in there? And I go, oh, just normal water. And he's like, no, 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 no. Put, put my stuff in it. And at this time, he was bringing over the silver water with a drop of his blood in it. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, if I can get him here or what? Like, okay. Go for it, right? So I, pour, so I pour some water in it, and, um, you know, I pull a couple myself, a couple cones, and then I throw Brian one, and I go, here you go. And then that's when I just seen the face change. It just suddenly went from, hmm. <laughs> and I passed it to him, and he looked at it, and he was like, this is the most phallic thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, Oh, okay. Um, yeah, see that little hole there? That's called the shotgun hole. You got to cover that. To and he goes, ah, ah, <laughs> "What is this? It looks like a woman's genitalia. It looks like a woman's genitalia. Oh my god, this is the most phallic thing I've ever seen—a woman's genitalia and a phallic symbol here." <laughs> and I'm looking at him. And I'm going, "What the fuck? It's just happened." <laughs> he hasn't even smoked yet, right? So he gets down to it, he smokes it, and I'm thinking, God, if he's going to smoke that, and he's like this already, this is going south pretty quick. <laughs> pretty quick. Right. Oh, yeah. So he, he smokes that one, I smoke a couple more, and I pack him another one, he smokes it. He's going on about how my mother's pregnant with twins. <laughs> <laughs> right? He's just like, <gasps> we're saving the world, your mother's pregnant with twins. <laughs> Oh, it's a beautiful story. Oh, the phallic woman genitalia. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, oh, dear Lord. And I flicked on a song, right? And I'm looking at the machete. 
And I click on the song. And the song comes on and it goes, I'm Jesus in reverse, the son of Satan with the firearm. Like, word to blood, apocalyptic firestorm. You know, and I'm looking and I'm like, I'll be right back. I went into the kitchen. Yeah, right? I, walk, I leave Brian to it, right? And he's laughing as he's going, women genitalia, women genitalia. And walking out, I go into the kitchen. I, I, Mom's in the kitchen doing something. I think she's fixing sandwiches. Some preparing some food. To eat. Yep. And I walked up to her and I said, I was very calm about it. Usually I would blow the fuck up. I would go nuts. I'm sorry for the language, but I would, I would, I would drop it. I would go nuts. I'd lose it. So I go up to Mom and I go, Tell me honestly. No, no, you didn't. Say, you just no, looked at me. I you said, "Are you look. pregnant?" Are you? Pre- I said, "Are you I pregnant?" Go, no. <laughs> and to my relief, she looked at me like, "What, what was the look you gave me?" God, it what, was. What planet did you just arrive from? No. <laughs> yes. So when I, I, with that, I went right. I'm going to my room. <laughs> no, no. I went back into oh, the oh, shed. Okay. Oh, I went okay. back and I went back into the shed and then I sat down. I calmed down. I stopped looking at the machete and looking at Brian. I looked at Brian. And then he goes, what about this water? Should we drink it? The water? I'm like, no, you don't drink the water. That's mixed with tobacco. That's all the filtered stuff out of the crap that you don't want inside your body. You don't drink the water. And he's just like, <laughs> And I'm just going, you silly bastard. <laughs> So he carries on with all this, and I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, okay, whatever. And so I, I can't remember what I did. I ended up walking away for a second, and Brian ended up going into the house, and then I went back into the shed, and I was punching cones, and Brian's, Brian's gone into the house. And I'm, no, no. And I'm, I'm, sitting, in, I'm sitting in the shed, and I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to calm myself down here. I must have went through a gram of pot in about, ten, about five minutes, you know, it's just... <laughs> you know, just really trying to grasp my head around the insanity after dealing with JC DC part of the DVD, and then now we got Brian Leonardo Golightly Which Marshall. Which led us straight to <laughs> the real mail deal. Yeah, and this is my first impression of God. He's sitting in front of me, calling things all these, you know, women genitalia. <laughs> and uh, my mother's pregnant with twins, and it doesn't turn out to be true, and all this crazy stuff that's flying so that out of his mouth. That was an ancient thought, wasn't it, babe? Uh, a memory. And, 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 and so, <laughs> so <laughs> at, at this point, I've just gone, oh, fuck, this isn't working. Pot's not helping. Well, <laughs> I could sit here and smoke the whole lot. It's not going to... Dude, shit. I'm gonna, you know what? And, and I never napped during the day until that day. I was like, I gotta get, I'm, I'm going to sleep. This is doing my head in. And just when I think it's over, right? I'm like, I'm just gonna walk in. I'm not gonna look at anyone. I'm gonna walk in, turn left, go to my room, down the hallway, shut it, and wait for this nightmare to be over, okay? <laughs> open the sliding door. I just see from the, cur- I, you know, you know, you open the sliding door, you got the curtain here, and I just see, um, about, you know, from the shoulders back, you know, a body, and, and it looks like a decapitated head via the curtain. The curtain's the guillotine. And I'm hearing, I'm meowing, but it's like a meowing from a tin can. It's like, meow, 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 meow. And I'm going, and there's Brian, sure enough. Head in a bowl, in the curtain, <laughs> head up against the window, right? And meowing in, like a cat in the bowl. I just looked at Mom. I just looked at Brian. Cakes are raw. Went into my bedroom. <laughs> now. Tried to forget the whole thing. Now, I'll tell you what. I, I, from that point on, he's been able to smoke me underneath the table. <laughs> that first impression was absolutely just for me. He, I honestly believe that he handles his pot absolutely fine, but that was just for me because, you know, the shit I had to deal with, folks, seriously, and that I got over, like the, all the stuff that I got over, 
Um, nobody has an excuse not to believe in Brian. If I can get over that hurdle of all the shit that I've been through in one lifetime, if I can get through that hurdle without once being locked up in an insane asylum and all that nonsense, mate, none of you, none of you have an issue. Oh, he smokes pot. He can't be crap. Get over yourself. Oh, he swears. He can't be crap. Get over yourself. My Lord. You know what? After what I've been through, Brian, Brian would be right to come in and kick you in the nuts, and you should still be able to believe in him and be like, yeah, that's God. That's God. He should be able to just come, you know, come in and... Smite her. The mighty smite her. No, no, not even smite. Just come in and insult your entire family. All right? Oh, just come jacks. in. No, no, no. Like, just, just bag everybody out. Come in and insult your entire family and just, you know, make you lose your job and all that nonsense, and you wouldn't have any anything above what I got over, so... Seriously, folks. <laughs> Seriously, folks. You know, like... <sighs> the Go Lightly Marshall Hour on freedomtalkradio.net So it wasn't too long after that, was it, that you were sent back to Canada for a bit of time out, wasn't it? Well, I wasn't you sent back said... for a bit of a time out. Well, I was well going... yes, you were. Well, yeah, all right. But, <laughs> but like, I, I, you know... I was expecting to be over there for a couple months. I ended up staying for like eight. Nine, nine months, wasn't it? Eight or nine months? Eight or Just nine months. Just <laughs> But, you know, I learned a lot over there. That's, that's, that's over there where, um, you know, I learned, um, what do you call it? Like active thinking. Putting yeah. yourself in other people's shoes and literally like visualizing walking a mile in somebody else's shoes before you, you know. But at, in, at, at an instant, you know. Yeah. Just by looking at them. So, and, um. And discovering, you know, that, that we are all God. That was my whole, that, 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 was the, that was the learning experience, that we all are God. And then, of course, that helped when I got back to, to Australia, because after listening to Brian in his sober mind, that's what he was saying. And I was like, hmm. You know, that's what I discovered on my own, and I knew that to be true. So I was like, okay, he's on to something here. But uh, honestly, it was in Canada that, that, that I also started going into the whole Pallades, and that's, you know, when it, down that rabbit hole. Yes, and, you, and you, I exhausted it. Yes. You know, I went to the I went to the very end of it, and until I was like, "Yeah, this is crap." Mm. You know, everybody, there's it's, it hasn't been proven. There's no evidence. There's nothing. There's nothing substantial enough for me to feel right about this, right? Mm -hmm. But I did take what I did take away from it, and that is that we are all God, and uh, we are all, we are all one. All except the Jews. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. Themselves <laughs> Jews and are not. They're soulless. They're soulless. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so moving on from there, that was your first impression, so you had time away for nine months. You still, though, were not a believer, were you? No. No. So, but what why, why, uh, wise words, Dane said something to you, didn't At a family gathering, uh, uh, it was about the numbers? Yeah, yeah, like, whatever the conversation with Brian would come up after that point, it was more like they were little stepping stones, mm -hmm. and there were... They weren't even stepping stones. Let's call them... They were little bits of the puzzle, right? That I needed for my life. Mm -hmm. That I needed and I was, like, I was really searching for. And whenever the topic of Brian would come up, that's when one of those bits of puzzles would get thrown in there. And it started happening more and more in abundance, right? And um, that that one with Darnay, um, basically, because the whole family was bashing you, right? Even when... Even, even, and this is... No, this is before you even start controversy. This is when they all loved him. <laughs> when, they met, when they all met him and they're like he's brilliant he's amazing blah 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 <clears throat> and um, you know <clears throat> and um, so Dara's going you know and I'm like you know, I'm having a conversation with Dara about it and I'm like oh he's not God you know it's full of shit it's mom she's crazy you know blah 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 blah, blah. and she's like yeah I know Adam I know what you're saying I get it but we did have a mathemat mathematician friend of ours he's like you know he's got his professor doctorate blah 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 and, um, mathematicians, and he did the math, and he said it was infallible. It was infallible. Infallible. It was. Mm. It was one hundred percent. I was like, "You're saying this? You're saying this?" Out of and, and what's people? more, that friend said it at a dinner party in front of Ben. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, but but I wasn't at that dinner party. No, no, no. Uh, so, I know that. This yeah, was a, she was just telling me yeah, straight up. She told up. me about it, yeah. Yeah, she told me straight up. She was just like, no, the numbers are right. And I'm like, so what, you're a believer now? You know, so. And, uh, yeah, so from that point on, um, what was it? It was, no, well, no. I, well, I had gotten back and we were living in, um, we were living in the Bradman laundry room. Yeah, and you, and, you, um, you, dis you, you decided, uh, 
you walked down to the Bradman from that conversation and I think you said to me that you decided that you had to come to terms with this. Like, or, or Dane was the one that said, you, listen, you've got to come to terms with this or something and then told you about that conversation mm. uh, of the... And then, of course, we were... Well, off. it was definitely at that point, you know, when you have your aunt who's, you know... When it comes to that point, you, that's when you... And, you know, having the experiences I've experienced in Canada and the understandings... Of course, you're not going to just deny it. You're going to go, okay, there's obviously something here. You know, there's, there's got, even if it's nothing significant and I might learn something from it, hey, fine. You know, mm. another example to learn from. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, so, and, and at, also at that point, you know, we were totally into the, you know, colloidal silver that Brian was into. Yeah, yeah, we're making this. And, and that to me was really brilliant. Mm. And, um, you know, and, and I respected him on all manners for that as well. You know, mm. I'm like, I don't believe he's Christ, but everything he's doing is absolutely brilliant. 100%. Well, you'd stuff. expect Jesus to do. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and that also at that point, you know, we were, I was in communication with Shadow and, um, you know, there's some weird things going on. We oh, really yes, the dude we from the army. Mm. Yeah, we didn't know really, we really didn't know where we were at that point in time in life. And um, what was next after that? Is that being well? We uh, we quickly disintegrated from there because uh, because uh, you the, got you got yelled at by Ben, and then uh, uh, so, so that, judgment was came that up. was that. Honestly, did that cause some tension in the entire family? Did that feel? Oh, oh totally. He he. he he, he, he made a video, YouTube video about Ben. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All oh, right, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah and that yeah. caused, oh, yes, that caused tremendous. And then, no, of course, I, I Rina thought, was judged. I thought the actual act of Ben yelling at me was him stirring shit in the family, saying we got to get rid of them or whatever. You know what I mean? No, 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 so, no, no, okay. no. Well, good, right. No, you've got to get rid of <laughs> yeah, awesome. you got to get rid no, That came because at the same time, uh, it was Rena's judgment. Uh, Brian made an yeah. yeah, upload. Yeah, yeah. And because Rena and but anyway, so so that went on, and then Ben quickly after, and and um, <laughs> and of course uh, Yara involved everybody, you know, Quentin yes. Bryce and anybody yes. that she knew, and, and made Absolutely. the YouTube channel and her name <laughs> was was brilliant. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. I was staying at Mum's on and anyway, that was the end. The three hundred dollars. You know, the, the, the 30 times 10 pieces of silver to, to leave kind of thing. So we did. And you chose to come with me. If, if I was going to be homeless, you'd be homeless with me. So the, the Freedom Wagon became our... <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I had any other options, Mom. Well, they said that you could stay. That was... They told you that. But you chose to go. I wouldn't stay with them savages. Jesus. Anyway, so we, we were homeless, but the, the plan was to go through our, the Northern Territory, which we did. So... Through all that, now, Why now. Is your She's the best friend of the Governor General in the country. Mm. Yes. Right. Yes, and I have. Yes. I'm saying, tell the Governor General what we are doing. Yes, yeah. we've been to New Guinea a couple of times. In yeah. Even curing cancer and AIDS and everything else. Yeah. Now this silly bitch has got cancer herself. She's still too stubborn to ask yeah. me how to cure it. Well, mm. It's all total insanity and, and doesn't belong in her world as. The rest of the world operates. Well, she sucks up to all the business people. Well, yes. Right. You know, total. Really John well, Howard. Like, well, yeah. well, exactly. Look at her position. She's the, only, she's the highest ranking woman in the cricket board, right? She's the only highest ranking woman in the cricket board. She's on her knees for every one of those blokes. Ugh. Ugh, God. Anyway, disgusting. Um, so we're in, now in the Northern Territory, uh, Yard well, comes up and, and we're going to goes, take goes, the swine flu cure. We're not now in the Northern Territory. It takes a little bit yeah, to get there. Yeah, it took us being thrown out. And but um, <clears throat> being thrown out and spending you know, a night and a few nights on the, on the road. But, uh, Lake, Lake Burley <coughs> Griffin, remember that? We that drove down awesome. Chamber, went, went to the 666 Northbourne Avenue, which is the ABC. Yep. Took a movie of it because I'd been there before. After I took all of the information to Quentin Bryce, the Governor General, I got in through past the gate, delivered her with a document like this that was uh, the background to everything, the swine uh, flu vaccination program, the UN, uh, you, everything. And we gave her a book, The Straw Man Burners. I wrote a letter to her. And she acknowledged it. She wrote a letter that was dated the 9th of September 2009, handwritten on parchment that was delivered uh, that I got. So... 
Yeah, that was uh, also when I got fined there. On it was two hundred and eighty-six dollars on the way, two hundred and eighty-six dollars on the way back, fined, and then I wrote to the chief of police in Canberra with the uh, the same letter. I told them that the crisis returned. He's my husband. You have no authority over me. Blah blah blah. So they didn't know what to do with it. And I, somewhere along the line, I just got this letter saying, "Don't ever drive in in the ACT again." And <coughs> so, so we end up in the Northern Territory. ACT for the viewer is Australian, Australian Capital, Capital Territory. Territory. Politicians, the world. yes, yes, yeah. Underneath are the computer systems to control the world. What's left of it after uh, they decimate it? Well, not only that, left. now you know with what they're doing with Fukushima. Yes. Yeah, and not only that, that's the only place where uh, pornography conventions are absolutely rampant, and also um, cannabis is legal, and certain drugs, rec- certain drugs are also legal mm. to a certain degree. That's where all the politicians are. Do you remember your reaction that time? Um, I went to Canberra once. And we, we, the two of us went down. Yeah, I wanted to go to yeah. an art gallery or something. Yeah, well, me and mother, mom and I went to um, Canberra. And, and I dropped you off. You she dropped me see. off and I went to the skate park. And um, I went through that entire town and I felt absolutely sick to my stomach. I felt like shit the entire day. I felt like... Yeah, I, and I knew what it was. I knew it, what exactly what it was. I knew it was the... The architect and the land, layout of the land and the forces and the energy of it was just so... Was just but the so point is that you phoned me within a very short time. It was only about half an hour that I dropped you off. You phoned me and said, get me out of here before I do something. Hmm. So I left. We left because you were feeling really sick, angry. You were yeah, feeling I was, angry. I, was absolutely, I almost caused an accident. I was so pissed off. Yeah. You know, I was so angry. I almost caused an accident. This poor Asian lady in her car. Like, I, she was driving down the highway, basically. Or not the highway, but the, you know, causeway. And it's, like, 70, 80. And, like, literally, she's, like, standing out and stood in front of her car. Mm. Like, I stood in front of her car to make her... And she was, like... <gasps> you know? And I was, like, oh, this is not good. No, this is really not good. Uh, yeah, it was... It was strange. That, very strange. And I'm breaking one of my favorite oh, skateboards. And <laughs> Pardon? I was still on that Yeah, you were in oh, Melbourne. <laughs> All right, uh, so now, now tell the point when um, you, you had a breakthrough. This was through uh, the Northern Territory, your yeah, fear well, of being left there. <laughs> well, that wasn't the breakthrough. No, that was, was that was that night, though. <laughs> that was, okay, I confronted Brian about some stuff, and... Um, Basically got in an argument. I was like, oh, you know, I don't like what you're doing with me, Mom. And Brian's just like, the hell, you smoked on my pot. And I was just like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> and then, like, you know, it was just this, this conversation. It wasn't a conversation. It was an argument. And, um, and you know, me and my stupid mentality, I was a little prick back then. Uh, so I went to bed. You know, I was just like, oh, I'm fuming. I get woken up. Crack of dawn. Woken up. There's Mom. She's going, here's 50 bucks. Brian doesn't want any more of this crap on the road. There's a nice woman inside. Her name's like Ashley. She's about 22 years old. She said she'll help you out and get, you can work until the next bus comes in to and go back to city. Now, mind you folks, she's about to leave me in the middle of nowhere. I was sitting in the middle of the road the night before, actually about five o'clock before, sitting in the middle of the road for an hour, listening to the iPod, smoking cigarettes, looking in one direction. No cars. <laughs> I turned around for the second hour and faced the other direction and smoked cigarettes for another hour. No cars. Until I was bored of sitting in the middle of a bloody road, a highway, mind you. And uh, so I went back in. This is where they were going to leave me. All right. In the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. She's telling me that, oh, there'll be a bus coming through. I'm like, I've seen one in the past 24 hours. One, you know. So I'm thinking, oh, God. Oh, God. And I start bawling my eyes out. And I'm begging. You're on your knees. I was on my knees. And I'm like, please, for God's sake. You can't just... I will will shut my mouth. You'll never hear another word from me again. I won't even breathe. I'll breathe in a bag. I'll breathe in a bag. (laughs) Please, just... just, and, 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 you know, sure enough, like, you know, after my begging and crying my eyes out, mom was going to leave me there. Mom was straight up. Like, that's her, that's her her devotion to Christ right there. Ready to leave her only son in the middle of the desert, you know? And but you had the dog with I had the dog with me, right? So that was all right. But um, but, but Brian's just like I was never going to leave you there. I'm like, Mom was. 
And mom's just like, yeah, it was. I'm like, anything for Brian. Anything for God. I'm like, oh, jeez. Oh, Christ. So, was, so anyways, I, I, my I, I got okay. back into the car eventually. So. Okay, well, let's hear my side. Okay, so, so Brian says, says this to me. He's got the car going. He says, I'm not taking Adam. He's not going further or not. And, and uh, so I go, he says, go and tell him. I go, okay. So I'm walking to the car and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the, the sacrifice of Abraham. And I think, I'm thinking, well, you know, he was saved by the ram the, in the thicket. <laughs> So this is going to be interesting. So I, I, I'm playing in, in my just mind the, as I Just the fact you. that you said, uh, thinking about this is the sacrifice of Abraham. She's got like, she pulls out the sheath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you didn't have to use it, right? <laughs> now, so I'm thinking, oh, all right, this, this is interesting. I just felt totally like this is a play. Literally, we are all but bit players in this movie set that's playing out. So I go and I deliver the good news to him. He's begging. So I'm looking at my son crying and begging and I'm thinking to myself, "Uh uh-huh. So now I'm walking back to the car and I say to I said, he's crying right now, I'm begging. (laughs) So he says to me, tell him to get in the car. So I go, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. I walk back and I say, pack up and get in the car. Well, because the night before you were, you know, know. you took your time. He took, oh man, he was complaining, moaning, silently moaning, complaining and taking Mind you, this is before I had any notion of a healthy work work ethic, right? (laughs) Any work was... (laughs) (laughs) He was being a total shit. Yeah, absolutely. So, So he was in the car within minutes and he sat in the back there, the extended cab, and said nothing. For a very long time. <laughs> and then he just kind of mellowed in, you know, the occasional friendly comment and join in to it. And, and then we got to Uluru that night. So this, this we was got the to 7th Uluru of July, night. 2009. We got to Uluru. <laughs> We're in the backdrop. It is rock. Oh, it is no. rock, yeah. It is rock, yeah. yeah. You wanted to be there for that date in time. So what happened? Well, we were in the overdraft. Yep, and, meaning uh, the overspill, over isn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, oh, they say overdraft, isn't it? Because they say, oh, or oh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Wherever. Yeah. The excess. On the edge of the yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> At a caravan park and, you know, set up the tent and everything. Mom and Brian's gone to sleep. And um, I was sitting there and I was kind of perplexed. You know, I had a DVD player and everything. I had all the entertainment in the world. But I was just like, you know, fuck it. I'm going to grab one of these books. I'm going to grab one of Brian's books. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to read it. I'm going to give it a shot. But that, I didn't have that thought until after I smoked a bit of cannabis, right? I smoked the last bit of pot and I was like, yeah, no, forget the DVD for now. Forget everything else I've been occupying my my mind with. I'll just grab this book, see where it takes me, right? Mind you, I've never, like, you know, I've never written a book at this point, like an entire book from page to, to ending, right? So, or for cover to, to ending. So, open the book and I start reading it and I'm like, what's going on about all this, you know, golfing and how to maximize your, yeah. and it was the Coriolis effect. And I'm like, what the hell does this have to do with anything? So I'd end up reading the whole Coriolis effect thing and then I open up and it's like, introduction! And I'm like, damn it! <laughs> you know? So but but by that time, I'm like, all right, he's very logical in the way he thinks it. It's like, ah, it's pretty damn amazing. You know, that's pretty, uh, that makes a lot of sense, right? So then we go into it and it took me, I think, 19 pages. I got to the 19th page where he was talking about um, the lunations and the mason, masonry layers of the pyramid. And um, that's what just hit it on the head for me. Because I had an experience when I was in year seven of, um, no, year eight of high school. No, year seven of high school. And um, what it was is I, I had a failing grade. I actually didn't have a failing grade. Me, Carney, and Daryl, we all had eyes, which means incompletes means that we would have to redo the entire that entire year because we were just so crap. So the teacher, Mrs. Um, Mrs. I can't remember what her name was, but Mrs. Rollo, she goes, all right, boys, there's a new subject coming up. If you can smash it, I might be able to give you a, you know, a passing grade, which is like a C, right? And we were, we were like, oh, okay. But she was like under the influence that we were juvenile delinquents and we wouldn't amount to anything in life. That's what she literally told us, right? Because we were the three dickheads of the classroom. So, and actually, no, it was us asking her what the next subject was. We were like, all right, if that's the way you view it, what's the next subject? And she said, Egypt. And I was like, hmm, all right, guys, let's smash it. 
Now, kids were taking home a project and doing a project a week. We did three a day. We went in. We asked her. We said, can we leave the classroom? It's too distracting, right? Because we were making everybody laugh. We were the class clowns. We said, can we leave the classroom, go to the empty one across there? And she's like thinking that we're going to all dick around. We're like, no, 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 no. We're going we're to smash it. We went in and we made, we made models. We made pyramids. We made absolutely, um, we, you know, irrigation systems. All of that. We did the whole lot. We did three a day each, right? And um, she ended up giving us a passing grade. We all got like B minuses, right? Or B plus. And she's like, I would have given you an A if you attended the class. <laughs> you know, because we'd come into, you know, a few classes a week, but we were smashing it, right? Like, why, why be there if, you know, the project you're supposed to do for that week, you've already done three of them. You know, you don't need to be there. You know, you got your passing grade. So, and she was really impressed by it. And then, of course, after that, we're like, she was like, so are you going to carry on doing it? We're like, no, we just want to prove you wrong. But the thing was, that, that subject was so intriguing to me, the, the mystery behind the pyramid, right? Because they're going, oh, the Egyptians built the pyramids, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at all the hieroglyphs on absolutely everything, even little trinkets like this, hieroglyphics on it. And yet, the pyramid, not a single hieroglyphic on the outside or the inside of it. And they're trying to tell me that, that and that's what I was thinking in class. I'm like, God, how, there's so much mystery behind this shit. This is in the middle of the desert, for God's sakes. How the hell did they do this all the way back then? You cannot tell me it was with a bunch of ropes and slings and pulleys and, you know, get the hell out of here, right? So, and, and that was always a great, you know, mystery to me. And I was, and I, and you know, and after that, later on in life, I'd always looked at different theories, you know, the alien theory and, you know, all these different theories about how the pyramids were built. Nothing really resonated with me until I read, I got to the 19th page and that's what cut it in half. That's what just split it, right? Split the stone right down the middle. And, um, yeah, it was like a kick to the face realizing that, <laughs> Realizing that was really, <whistles> yeah, and um, and that was it. That, that's what really, really uh, threw it into me. Was, Turned the page. Yeah, yeah. This man had just explained everything I had wondered about the pyramid, and it, there was no doubt in my mind that's exactly what it was, because everything else I had exhausted, and like everything, and, and it, uh, also how I knew it was it is because it was so completely foreign to what everybody else out there was saying. You know, this was fresh. This was absolutely, you know, this dude's got some, he's got like a spirit guide or something, right? That's what I was thinking. (laughs) That's what I was thinking. That's what I'm thinking at page 12, you know, I'm like, this dude's got a spirit guide or some sort, right? He's, he's doing some channeling or some shit that, you know, you know, he's probably... Because yeah, I had that dream as well. Oh, I forgot about the dream that I had about Brian, right? Before the whole belief system, right? This is another thing that all of you folk need to get over. I had a dream about Brian. This was the dream. I'm standing there, post-apocalyptic world. It's red skies. There's blood on the fucking floor. There's shipping containers, right? There's one that says 666. I go up to the shipping container. I open it. <laughs> Flies and and the stench of death, right? Comes flying in. I'm like, oh my god! And then I see this low light coming down this tunnel, and like this is a big shipping container. And I'm on the stairs going down. There's this low light. I start walking down the stairs. What do I see? I see a nice big circle. There's Brian in the middle of the circle. Goat's horns, <laughs> red eyes, red eyes, sitting there. And he's passing a cup of goat's piss to everybody, and they're all taking a drink, right? And I'm watching, and I'm watching as it's happening, his eyes are going red, and he opens his mouth, and he just goes, <laughs> and, and everything starts shaking, right? And then I see this black doctor, and he's up at the top, and he's just, like, lobbing heads, and they're falling down the stairs past my feet. And they're rolling into the circle of the people, as Brian's like, <laughs> heads rolling in the middle of the circle, man's lobbing heads off, bodies are building up. I can't get out of the shipping container anymore because there's bodies piled up past the door. I'm looking at mom. Mom's like, ah! Oh! You know, red eyes. And I woke up and, like, I woke up screaming. Like, oh! And I remembered it so vividly. Abby, Abby doesn't believe in him because of a look. <laughs> a fucking look. Now, I remember you telling me those th- that dream. We were in the Bradman outhouse. I remember her response, that is from the enemy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Brian, you know? Like, <laughs> 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 you know? 
because we, we were we were about to go, uh, you know, um, we were about to go to New Guinea. No, wait on, you were back. You 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 weren't around when we went to New Guinea the first two times. No. Anyway, whatever. I just said um, that that is from the enemy of your soul. Yeah. Who wants to prevent you? Hello. Like so. At this time, I'm like I'm just looking at mom and I'm imagining the cup. <laughs> and I'm just. <laughs> You know, there's the Kool-Aid, Ma, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, well, wait, I've got to see how much time we've got left. <laughs> we'll have to continue with this until next show. We'll, we'll cut, <laughs> we've, got, we've got four, three minutes. Let's <laughs> well, so we're in, we'll end it at, um, right at my point of uh, belief, really. Yeah. The start of my belief. And, and like, you know, because at that age, I was absolutely, you know, riddled with demons and parasites and whatnot, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, from then on, it wasn't easy going. It was still a struggle. And like, this is one thing I've always said to mom is, you know, all you followers out there, when you really find Brian and understand and believe and know it, right, your whole life changes. But the thing is, me and Ma have been looking for God on the earth my entire life, my entire comprehension of knowing what religion and God is. We've been looking for God on the earth as a man. So when I found Brian, I was just like, yeah, okay, nothing changes. I always knew I was going to find him, so nothing changed my circumstances. I found God. Cool. <laughs> Everybody else is like, I found God. Everything's changed. I found God, and I'm like, cool. What does that change my situation? I'm still fucked. <laughs> I'm serious. This is how I felt. And it was, it was kind of depressing, you know? <laughs> and not many people can say that. They found God, and it was depressing. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I literally found... But, you know, of course, and of course, in that morning, you know, he remembers what I said. I woke up, and I said... Walked up to him, I shook his hand, I said, you bastard, you really are the Christ, aren't you? <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah I give you yeah, a Because I walked up as you a hug. Oh, dear, dear. I knew it, he wasn't telling me anything. Oh, Lord. Uh, some people are easy, some are a little bit more difficult. You're uh, in a sort of stubby grey area of being difficult to handle. <laughs> yeah. well, this is a piece of cake. This is the last time I think you know that all this is locked into the wrong guy here. Yeah, he's lying. <laughs> It was probably you that like threw that little bit of pot and just put the book next to it. A little suggestive theme there. Just. <laughs> yeah. uh, look, wait. How, how about we end? Uh, no, let's end here and then we'll start the next session okay. and we'll we'll talk about the adventures through the Northern Territory because oh, wow. you've got the trace and we've got the police at. Um, the oh. biggest play, all, all of oh, those we things. Got so many and things. And going Australia. into the, uh, what was it, Port Augusta, the police station. And oh, all right, I'll end it here. Yes, yeah, so I'll end it here. And, and is, okay. is Joel up yet? Uh, Let's go and knock on his door so, so he can get this. Good.